What is going on guys? My name is Jerome. I'm back at it again with another episode of NBA Kicks, the show where we count down the 10 best sneakers in the NBA every single week of the season. This week's episode is our final episode of the season. I know you guys are sad. I'm sad too. But don't worry guys, because these 10 sneakers that I got lined up for you today are literally the 10 best sneakers of the entire season, which is crazy because we covered over 150 sneakers this year. And these 10 shoes, I, I feel pretty good about the list. I really do feel like these were the 10 best sneakers of the entire season. However, if you watch this episode and you feel like I'm missing a shoe, a colorway, or even like the number one spot, if you feel like another shoe should be in that spot as the signature sneaker of the 2022-23 season, please let me know what sneaker you think that is with a comment down below. I can't wait to hear what you guys think was the best shoe of the entire season year but for now sit back make sure you got a snack and enjoy the final episode of nba kicks <laughs> starting off the list at number 10 we have steph curry with the flotro curry twos yeah, 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 I get it. You all hate Steph Curry sneakers. But to be honest, the hate on Steph Curry's kicks have always been overblown. And this year, Under Armour and Steph decided to push back on all that hate with this special edition colorway. Seven years ago, Under Armour dropped the Chef Curry 2 lows, and they were mercilessly hated on, perhaps more so than any other sneaker than I can remember. Damn, Steph Curry, these shoes look like they're putting themselves through nursing school. Personally, I never really understood the tremendous amount of hate that this sneaker got because there were definitely worse sneakers out there. I'm looking at you, Kevin Durant. <laughs> but look, I'm only one voice, and people made it known that they hated the Chef Curry too low. So seven years later, Under Armour and Curry brand brought back the Chef colorway, but this time they added some more flair in response to the hate. Sitting on top of the Flotro variation of the Curry too low, which has a new flow midsole slash outsole, this updated colorway uses a burnt graphic around the toe, which could be seen as symbolic in that Under Armour is burning the old Chef Curry 2s and creating a new legacy with Curry brand. Personally, I really dig the fact that they're kind of acknowledging their past mistakes, if you will, with this new colorway. I mean, it really just shows us that these brands really do see what the people are saying about them. And whether or not you like this shoe and how it looks or whether or not you would buy it or rock it yourself, you gotta appreciate it because I know everyone can appreciate someone who stands up for themselves and this new colorway of the Curry 2 Flotro is basically an underdog story. Next up at number nine, we have Montrez Harrell with the Louis Vuitton LV Trainer 2. Would I wear these on a basketball court? Probably not. Do I even like how these look? Eh, in a 90s nostalgia type of way, yes, but with all that pushed aside, Montrez Harrell is simply on this list because he had the audacity to wear a Louis Vuitton sneaker on an NBA floor during an actual NBA game, and that, my friends, is the definition of a flex. Now, some of you might not have even known that this sneaker exists, but yes, these are in fact real, and they're called the LV Trainer 2s, and they retail for a cool $1,600. That might seem like a large amount of money, but in its defense, they are designed by the late Virgil Abloh, and they're made in Italy, and they have seven hours of stitching for one pair. Okay, they're still not worth $1,600, but the sheer audacity to rock these in an NBA game is exactly why you're seeing Montrez on this list, because I don't particularly think that this is an exquisite looking pair of kicks, and I have no real desire to own a pair for myself, but I can respect the creativity from Montrez. So I can safely say that he is the only player that I have ever seen rock this sneaker on the court, and that, my friends, 
has got to earn a spot on this end of the year list. Coming in at number eight, we have Paul George with the Nike PG6. We didn't have a ton of collaborations this season, but Nike and Paul George did team up with Mattel to bring us this Hot Wheels collaboration, which just brings out the kid in all of us. This colorway has everything. You got bright and vibrant colors that really pop, as well as unique graphics such as the flaming swoosh and that checkered flag design, as well as a special edition box, which make these a true collector's item. Hot Wheels also hooked PG up with, with an exclusive Hot Wheels car, which features all of the same designs as the sneaker, and PG also got a real life Hot Wheel as well, which naturally he pulled up with at the game with his matching pair of kicks. Now that is how you do a collaboration, a true complete package from both Nike and Mattel. And to be honest with you guys, had we not had this collaboration, we probably wouldn't have seen the PG6 on this end of the year episode because it was a pretty ho-hum year for the PG6 in terms of colorways. So this Hot Wheels collab single-handedly saved the PG6's season. It's just too bad that they couldn't save the Clippers season. Okay, look, I'm a Laker fan. What did you expect? I just had to shoehorn that one in. At number seven is Kawhi Leonard with the Kawhi 3 from New Balance. So just like I gave Under Armour and Curry Brand credit for being ultra aware earlier in the episode, I'm giving New Balance the same credit here with this new colorway of Kawhi's third signature sneaker. So for many, New Balance is still that brand that older people wear. I'm talking about your grandpas, your dads, that one uncle who has no drip, these are the stereotypes that people try to pin on New Balance, but while that may be true, New Balance has been on an absolute tear this season, and they are currently one of my favorite brands to rock on the court. Now this colorway looks just like one of those New Balance shoes that your grandpa, dad, or uncle owns, which is just the perfect way to instill the brand's identity and history into a modern silhouette. And with the dad shoe style being in trend, this is the perfect time to drop these. So you gotta give New Balance credit here for being timely, ultra aware, and unashamed of their place in the footwear industry. If you can't laugh at yourself, you really shouldn't laugh at all. And I love that New Balance is acknowledging themselves here like Under Armour did earlier. And I also gotta admit that this look, it actually works on a basketball shoe. Next up at number six, we got Kevon Looney with the Anta KT8. So here we have the only sneaker on this list that comes from a China-based sportswear brand. So in a way, these are an underdog, but boy what an underdog these are. Now these are called the KT8 2Ds, and they're inspired by Klay Thompson's favorite comic books, which Anta doesn't say specifically which ones, but we get it, these are inspired by the colorful 2D world with their bold brush strokes and graffiti style design. For me, this colorway just pops and I love how they really do look like they were ripped from a page of a comic book and feel like a two dimensional design in a three dimensional world. I mean, just look at these for a second guys, they really truly do look 2D. I am a little bummed though that we didn't get to see Clay rock these himself, but good on Kevon Looney for bringing these out on the court and giving Anta the only China-based brand spot on this list as the Anta KT8 is officially the sixth best sneaker of the 2022-23 season. Next up at number five, we have LeBron James with the Nike LeBron 20. The LeBron 20s has been one of the more popular LeBron silhouettes in a very long time. I mean, Usually when I go out to a court or a gym, I barely see anybody rocking LeBrons. Now, I know I'm in the Bay Area, but recently I have been seeing a lot more people rock the 20s, which makes sense because the LeBron 20 is one of the most versatile sneakers that LeBron has ever dropped. Now this colorway is the most recent sneaker on the list and LeBron did wear them during game three of the semifinals and they seem to be a third variation of the South Beast colorways that LBJ rocked earlier in the season. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think this is by far the best colorway from the pack. It's got an animal print on the upper, which just looks like it's made out of velvet. This is beautiful. What is that, velvet? It's got a sharp black and metallic gold swoosh that really pops off of the silhouette. 
and you also get those classic South Beach hits with the pink and baby blue as accents. It's pretty much the perfect package, with the only issue being that Nike has yet to release these, but the silver lining there is that it makes these super exclusive, which only add to their prestige, making these hands down one of the best sneakers that we have seen all season long. Come on, Nike, like who was in the boardroom making the decision to drop those pink and orange colorways and not these? It's almost like you hate us. Coming in at number four, we have Shea Gilgis Alexander with the Converse Prototype CX. If you were to tell me at the beginning of the season that Converse of all companies was going to have one of my favorite silhouettes of the year, I would have called Cap. But here we are with Converse having the fourth best sneaker of the entire season. The Prototype CX pretty much speaks for itself. It's got an extremely striking visual design and amazing colorways to complement it. We had an Air Yeezy inspired colorway, a Kobe inspired colorway, some incredible gradient colorways, but my favorite colorway has got to be the Thunder and Lightning colorway with an incredible cool and warm color scheme that is accompanied by a lightning graphic on the upper and also features color shifting technology, which is activated by sunlight. I know that's kind of gimmicky and should really only excite kids 12 years or younger, but you know what? These brought out the kid in me. And also, just look at these things, guys. They look absolutely incredible on the court. That sculpted midsole design is just so unique and truly doesn't look like any other sneaker out there right now, which is why I just had to put the Prototype CXs on the end of the year list. Next up at number three, we got Ja Morant with the Nike Ja One. Let's not beat around the bush here. Ja Morant had a very turbulent season, but despite all that turbulence, his first signature sneaker from Nike has been incredibly successful. Nike by far made the biggest splash during All-Star Weekend, which is kind of sort of the center of the basketball sneaker world with an incredible mount jaw structure that was actually made out of ice and gave fans an opportunity to buy a pair of jaw ones which featured real Swarovski crystals on them. And to this day, the jaw one is one of the hardest sneakers to come by as every release has sold out both in line and on stores. But with all that extra stuff put aside, the Ja One was the most successful debut signature sneaker of this season, thanks to its hyped releases and incredible colorways, with my favorite being this Home Grizzlies colorway, which featured a white upper alongside that retro Grizzlies teal and red color scheme, and a claw graphic along the upper and midsole. At the end of the day, the Ja One was hands down the most talked about sneaker of the season, kind of like the Mellows last season, but if Ja had had a smoother season off of the court and perhaps maybe even a deeper playoff run, the Ja 1 might have actually been the best sneaker of the season, but with everything in its totality taken into consideration, they officially land at number three. Coming in as our runner up, we have Kyrie Irving with his custom pair of Kyrie eights. So speaking of turbulent seasons, Kyrie is no stranger to controversy. And that controversy actually found its way into Kyrie's sneaker rotation, which in this case was actually for the better. During All-Star Weekend in Salt Lake City, Kyrie rocked a custom of his eight signature sneaker, which essentially turned the silhouette into a pair of moccasins. Some of you might already know that Kyrie is part Native American and is an official member of the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. So this is just one of the many ways that Kyrie has honored his heritage. As far as the sneakers though, on their own, this is just an incredible look that has never been worn in the league ever. So Kyrie gets extra points for creativity. And now that I think of it, this might be the only time that we've seen a sneaker specifically linked to someone's culture because besides like special edition colorways that are linked to someone's heritage, there really isn't a culture that has like a specific shoe, like a moccasin. Like I, I guess Rui Hachimura could wear like Japanese slippers, but that would not be ideal. I don't know, but what I do know is that Kyrie's mocks were definitely one of the best sneakers of the year. However, they weren't the best sneakers of the year. Finally, at number one, we have Tyrese Halliburton with the Kobe Zoom 
generation. When Tyrese Halliburton wore this shoe, I knew it was gonna be on this end of the year episode. And to be completely honest with you, I kinda knew it was gonna take the number one spot. This hybrid of the Kobe 6 and Zoom generation comes from Coda Customs, and it blends two of the most iconic sneakers from my generation. Now, Fusion sneakers aren't anything new. In fact, they've been hated on in the past, but this custom hybrid actually works. Everything from the silhouette to the color scheme is just class, and the use of materials here is absolutely A1, with my only real complaint being the swoosh on the toe box that I kinda coulda done without, but everything else here is a home run and is truly one of the most unique sneakers of not just the season, but of all time. When I look back at the season from a sneaker point of view, this is the sneaker that instantly pops into my head. So to me, that's gotta make these the signature sneaker of the season. So I gotta congratulate Coda Customs and Tyrese Halliburton. You have officially won the 2022 23 season of NBA Kicks. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode and the entire year of NBA Kicks. We will be back next season. Of course, you guys know I got you. But let me know what you guys think about these 10 sneakers. Did I get it right? What did I get wrong? What did you think was the signature sneaker of the season? Let me know all that good stuff in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe for more sneaker related content just like this. We got performance reviews coming in the off season. So make sure you ring that bell so you never miss a video. My name is Jaren. It's been great having you. Catch you guys in next week's episode. Actually, I won't. Peace.